In medieval times, most of life's problems could be solved by killing the right nobleman. If your claim to the throne is disputed, kill a noble. If that fig maiden you love is promised to another, kill a noble. If you can't find any mushrooms to go with your pigeon pie, kill a noble. But with so much killing, the era gave us countless mysterious deaths. Countless murders that may never be explained. William Rufus is one of the lesser known kings of England. The son of William the Conqueror, he failed to produce his own heir. He also failed to achieve anything remarkable as king. One day, in his early 40s, he went hunting within a forest. While on the hunt, he was shot through the lung by an arrow fired by one of his own men. He died then and there, with the event going down in history as an accident. But some historians believe the king was murdered. Enough nobles wanted him dead as he was an ill-tempered and violent ruler. After being shot, the nobles accompanying him on the hunt left his body in the forest. A strange decision if his death was an accident. His brother Henry was with the group that day. As Henry succeeded him as king, it's easy to see why so many now believe William's death was plotted. Henry then raced for the capital of England to seize power as if the whole thing was planned. Caliph al-Hakim was ruler of an Islamic empire. It was at the peak of its wealth and power during his time as ruler, giving him the confidence to have anyone he liked executed. And so he was seen as a cruel tyrant by many. It's unclear what exactly happened to the Caliph, but the story goes that one night he left Cairo upon a donkey. He often went on night journeys, but this time he didn't return. The Caliph was never seen again. Search parties recovered his donkey and some blood-stained clothing, but no sign of the Caliph. What happened to him is a complete mystery, but given the blood-stained clothing recovered, and the view many held that he was a corrupt tyrant, murder is not unimaginable. Lord Darnley was the second husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, and is most well known for dying young, which is never a good thing to be known for. Darnley was staying at a house for a night while travelling, but that night the house exploded. Barrels of gunpowder were kept under the house, which was somehow set alight and the whole house blew up. Running outside, Darnley was smothered to death in the dark. No one was ever proven to be his killer. Darnley was known for rudeness, jealousy, and drunken violence. When the queen fell pregnant, he suspected the baby was not his, but her secretary's. He gathered a group and stabbed the secretary to death in front of Mary. They stabbed him 56 times. Darnley was a loose cannon, it's easy to see how those around him would want him to disappear. The problem is there are so many possible suspects that anyone could have done it. Darnley basically gave everyone he encountered a reason to want him dead. That's why his death will likely remain a mystery forever. Amy Dudley was the wife of Lord Robert Dudley, a favourite of England's Queen Elizabeth. She was a fairly unremarkable figure who might have been largely forgotten by history if not for her mysterious death. For years there were rumours that her husband was the Queen's secret lover, and that if he was not already married she would take him as her husband. So when Amy Dudley was found dead, many believe the Queen had something to do with it. In 1560, her corpse was discovered at the bottom of a flight of stairs. Robert was with the Queen when hearing of her death. The official story is that Amy fell down the stairs and broke her neck, but an inquest into her death found evidence of two wounds on her head. Such wounds are more consistent with bludgeoning than with a fall, which would seem to suggest she was deliberately attacked before being thrown down the stairs. If true, her killer seems to have gotten away with a perfect murder. Conrad of Montserrat was king of Jerusalem, the state established by Christian forces during the crusade. The leader of a crusader kingdom, he was surrounded by rulers who hated him. So if he were to be murdered, you'd not be surprised. While walking home one night, he was attacked by two assassins. They stabbed Conrad to death. One assassin died, the other was taken for interrogation. They wanted to know who sent the assassin. Under torture, he said the king of England organized the killing. The Duke of Austria was Conrad's cousin. He managed to capture the King of England and charged him with his cousin's murder, but they could not prove his guilt. Still today, it's unknown who sent the assassins. Arthur of Brittany was the grandson of the English king, and when the king died, his claim to the throne was as strong as any other. But his uncle John was declared the next king, despite Arthur being the true heir. When John became king, he knew that influential figures supported Arthur's claim to the English throne, one of which being the King of France. 
While still a teenager, Arthur raised an army and besieged King John's forces, but the attack failed and he was captured. While captured, John ordered Arthur be taken away. It's unknown what happened next, but Arthur was never seen again. One story tells that John had Arthur blinded and castrated, causing him to die from the shock. Another story tells that he was simply locked away for the rest of his life, and one tells that he renounced his claim to the throne and lived as a quiet nobleman. King John was not above killing a child. He's remembered as one of history's cruelest monarchs. He's even the villain in Robin Hood legends. Edward II was King of England, but in 1327 he was deposed, after ruling an unstable government poorly for a number of years. Seen as a useless military leader and also gay, there were numerous nobles who wanted him out of power. His wife left him, travelling to France. She soon returned to England with an army to overthrow the king. Edward's forces abandoned him and so he was overthrown. He was taken to a castle and kept as prisoner, but the former king still had supporters. There were numerous plots to liberate him. It was clear that as long as he was alive, he would be a threat to his wife's regime. He died soon after this in secretive conditions. Legend tells that he was killed by having a red hot poker inserted into his anus, as to not leave any signs of murder. The official story is that he died of natural causes, yet in the coming centuries rumours would tell of how England's former king was murdered. Geoffrey Chaucer is often seen as the greatest poet of medieval times. Through his work as a bureaucrat, he achieved support of his writings from the King of England. He was so valued by the king that when he was kidnapped, the ransom was paid by his king. Chaucer lived a long life by medieval standards, which is not so long by today's, but he saw multiple kings take power, the second of which was Richard II, who was an even bigger supporter of Chaucer. But Richard was overthrown in 1399, and after that, Chaucer seems to disappear from the historical record. It's thought he died of unknown causes within that year. His sudden death so soon after the king he was so close to lost power makes some wonder if he was murdered. As Chaucer was a popular figure associated with Richard, the new king may have wanted to quietly remove him from existence. No official documents mention his death or funeral or anything relating to his estate, and so at the very least something strange occurred with his death. It's possible the new regime didn't kill him but still erased his death from history. The Princes in the Tower is one of history's most infamous cold cases. In 1483, the King of England died. His 12-year-old son was declared king, but suddenly he was deposed by his uncle after just months. He and his younger brother were sent to the Tower of London. At this point, they vanished from recorded history. Their uncle became King of England and people have since speculated what happened to the boys. Rumour tells that they escaped from the Tower, but it's most commonly believed they were quietly murdered at the wish of their uncle. Two centuries later, in 1674, the skeletons of two children were found in the tower. It was and is largely believed to be the remains of the two boys. But as we can't be certain, their disappearance remains an open mystery. One Borgia was son of the Pope, making him one of Europe's most important people. His family were among medieval Italy's most notorious dynasties, using the church to gain incredible power. With two popes coming from the dynasty, they acted more like a crime family than religious leaders. The family name came to be heavily associated with corruption, murder, incest, and torture. Anyone involved with the Borgias was vulnerable. This was proven in 1497, when one was found dead in the Tiber River with his throat cut and around 10 stab wounds. He was clearly murdered, but it was unknown who was guilty. His father ordered an investigation, but it was ended just one week later. Rumour told this was because one's younger brother was revealed as behind it, and their father chose to conceal the truth rather than expose his new heir as the killer. His brother Cesare was a jealous and cunning figure. It would be no surprise if he had one murdered, especially given what family they come from. It's difficult to overstate how angry and jealous Cesare was with his brother. I'd put my money on him being behind it, but there are plenty of possible suspects. One was an arrogant man constantly offending other powerful figures. It could also have been the work of a rival family. The Borgias were not Italy's only dynasty. Their corruption made them clear enemies to those in rival dynasties. So for them to have the Pope's favourite son murdered was an obvious explanation in the eyes of many. The House of Orsini was openly known to want him dead. Something they worked with one's younger brother to arrange the assassination and effectively cover it up. 